What is good, everybody? Timeless Traveler here, and welcome back to my Let's Play. Now, if you didn't catch last episode, go ahead and take a look at that, and you will see the creation of this lovely double guardian farm. That's right, I spent a lot of time searching for two guardian farms that were within my sim distance. Fortunately, I am running on... I'm not playing on a realms or any server, so I'm running at a sim distance of 10, and... These two farms just happen to share the sim distance. They happen to be within proximity as long as I'm right here in the middle and all both those farms are running. I'm getting pretty much double the XP and double the rates that you would get from a single guardian farm. It's great. It literally took me like probably a day uh, if, if in real life time to take out all the shulker boxes of shards and crystals. I made like at least eight shulker boxes of lanterns, bricks, and regular prismarine with, uh, yeah, yeah, I had a lot left over. And as, if you look at my levels, you can see that I started off, I think at level 200. And now after running this farm for, I think it was probably just not even a full day. And I managed to get this much. So uh, mission accomplished. Also talked about troubleshooting at the end of last episode about uh, items that would skip over the hoppers. And then one of you brought it to my attention that there has been a long time bug on hoppers and item filtration. And luckily, luckily we have a new preview where they actually fixed this bug. This bug has been going on for like two years. And once this bug is removed, items will be able to pass through these hoppers and actually go into their programmed slots without any issues. There will be no chance of them skipping over the hoppers and going off into wherever. Um, that's coming up very, very soon. I am very excited uh, because this is also not only going to help this farm, this is also going to help our raid farm, especially after we upgrade it to have 48 villages stacked in there. Also, big shout out for uh, Argentina for winning the World Cup. I'm sure a lot of you probably have been keeping up to date. Uh, as of today, this is uh, December 18th. Uh, or yeah, Argentina won the World Cup. So uh, uh, shout out to Argentina. Shout out to Messi. And uh, even shout out to France for playing a good game. Still don't know what kind of theme we're going to do for the tunnel connecting from the Nether Hub Highway to the portal here. We may do some sort of Guardian Farm themed design like using all of the prismarine bricks and all that stuff but maybe we'll see what happens but uh, i want to kind of keep a theme for each off brand so for our gas farm we'll have like i don't know some gas related blocks and for the emerald farm we'll have something related to emeralds and raids and stuff maybe even bring in a couple ravagers and put them in cages something like that and speaking of tunnels we actually have a few new additions to our nether hub uh, we have at, we finally have a tunnel going to the end portal so we'll maybe do some like end stone theme stuff some uh some purple and all that stuff growing out and we also have the industrial district in our nether hub as a shortcut so basically we can get to all of our major locations in this world so far via the nether hub system which is what i wanted to accomplish this whole time and we actually still need to work on the tunnel itself I actually need to break this out a little bit. But now we have quicker access to the industrial district. So at some point, I don't know when, but uh, we're going to decorate these tunnels and make it more fitting for the nether hub. But why are we coming here? If you've read the title of this episode and seen the thumbnail, um, why, <laughs> why are we coming to the industrial district? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Basically, um, yeah, we are going to be doing some stuff. We are basically, because I want to have an overpowered piglin farm because i want unlimited access to mainly blackstone and quartz and obsidian um i need we basically need to create a gold rush and i haven't officially tested this just yet but we're going to be doing something i have never done before we're basically building four of navy nexus's uh quad portal gold farms i'm just going to get rid of this stuff his quad portal gold farm Okay, four of those. Well, I'm going to connect them all up. I have a design. I tweaked, I modified some stuff so that I can filter out the XP from the items. All the XP is going to come to me because this is 16 nether portals, fully full sized. Uh, we're going to get all of the pigment from there. 
it's going to create a lot of XP. So I need to make sure how I have it set up is it's going to deliver all the XP specifically to me. I'll be in the center of four different farms and you'll kind of get a bigger, better idea once we're at the build site. Uh, and then it's going to filter off the items and push them into shulker box loaders. It's going to burn all of the all of the nasty rotten flesh because why would I want 16 portals worth of rotten flesh from a farm? That's just ridiculous. So it's all going to get destroyed. Uh, what, so why are we here? Well, we're here because there's going to be a lot of glass used on this farm. And I have glass, but I don't have colored glass. And I've been having to scrounge up dyes here and there for some of these other farms, as you can see, like this red dye. Um, I had to I had to just manually bone meal a lot of flowers for making the red glass, for making the, the black glass for some of our other farms. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just put together a basic dye farm. A uh, flower farm, basically. It's going to make all of the one tall flowers. It's just going to just make a bunch of them and put them into large chests. And we'll turn all those flowers into dye. We can dye our glass. And then that way, when we put together the quad farm or the, uh, I guess it's 16, 16 portals, a quad quad farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four farms with four portals each. Uh, it's going to look a lot better with the color glass. So let's go ahead and put that together real quick. So let's talk more about this gold farm. Some of you know Navy Nexus, a great uh, technical Minecraft player on the Bedrock community. He put together this lovely farm. This is a quad portal gold farm. What it does is because it's chunk aligned, he's optimized it. Uh, there's uh, he's reduced considered all potential issues with like pending ticks, all that stuff. He made some videos about how portal farms work on the bedrock uh, version of Minecraft. So you can take a look up, look him up, Navy Nexus. He does a lot of does a lot of stuff about how this all works. Uh, I've adapted it, of course, for the powdered snow. For anyone that has his farm, we you know that we break the portals previously using water, but now that we have powdered snow, we use that. It's a little bit more efficient, uh, and it also helps with lag. So we'll be at you know. It's, it's it's been modified and changed over time. We even have ourselves this lovely storage, this bulk storage that will sort every item, place it in the shulker boxes. You know how all that works. We're building four of these. Yes, yes, uh, four of these. And the way I have it, when I tested it out, I built a uh, I built a partial version of this farm, modified for today's episode to have all of the XP filtered out and channeled towards me. I will be in the center. We're going to be taking over almost a 200 block radius because this farm occupies four chunks. And then I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in the center. There's going to be a two chunk gap between my space and that farm. Then there's going to be another two chunk gap in that direction, that direction, and that direction. All the XP is going to come straight towards me. All of the loot is going to drop down pretty much exactly how we have it set up right here. It's going to get dropped into the water stream, the filters, and then all the rotten flesh is, uh, well, just, just look at this. This is probably after about four hours, and this is just one slice of storage. We still have to consider this slice, this slice, this slice, this slice. It's a lot of rotten flesh. I've modified it to just spit it all into lava cauldrons. Get rid of the waste. We don't need it. I'm not going to waste shulker boxes. I Yes, I have a wood farm. Yes, I have a shulker farm. No, I do not want to waste my time making shulker boxes just to collect a bunch of useless rotten flesh. Instead, this is purely going to be pumping out. Oh, and it's also going to destroy all the mob heads since I have an add-on that gives me mob heads. Uh, I don't I don't need those. I have like one, maybe two shulker boxes of piglin heads, and that's more than I will ever, ever need. So we're going to get rid of those. 
and the Rotten Flesh. This is purely going to pump out XP, gold ingots, and gold nuggets. And then I, I depending on how many golden ingots it gives me per hour, I may just get rid of the golden nuggets because I don't want to spend all that time crafting golden nuggets into gold ingots unless I make one of those like shulker box breakers and I could just basically sit here and spam the craft button. I think something like that can work on bedrock, but mm -hmm. uh, either way, if this produces enough gold ingots per hour, I may just, yeah, just get rid of all the gold nuggets, stick with the gold ingots, and then take all that into a bartering farm that we'll create in a future episode. So we have a couple things we want to do today. Oh, here's a weird camera angle. Uh, we have a couple things that we need to get done. So we're going to take this one down. Then we're going to go over to the build site that is the volcanoes here. The beehive is there. We're going to go about 800 blocks over there. We're going to terraform the land. We're going to flatten it out. We're going to build a giant, giant circle. Give it a nice little uh, base to build off of it has to be perfectly chunk aligned this takes a lot of math and a lot of focus for me to get this done um just planning this alone has taken me probably a week uh including just sitting there zoning out thinking oh my god i can never get this done to actually measuring things out on plots model or finding the right size circle uh we got a lot of stuff to do flatten it out build the circle build four of these connect it all up and it's it's gonna look great i think i think you're all gonna like it so let's go ahead and jump into it Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, since last recording, since I last spoke to you, um, it was back in December. So, well, this is the first recording of the new year. So happy new year to all of you. Um, for all my Spanish speakers, Feliz Año Nuevo. Um, it's good to be back. It's good to see you all again. Um, I know it's been like <laughs> literally just like a few seconds for all of you, but uh, it's it's been a it's been about a month, I think, since my last actual rec voice recorded clip. Um, during that time, I have, I mean, you saw this time lapse. Um, we're not going to show it now, but you, you saw the work that, that went into this, uh, like 30 plus hours just on the base. Then I did some decoration we'll, we'll take a, take a look around. Um, and then building this monstrosity that we're going to see soon. It's, it took a long time and I'm also, uh, I'm also busy with like two different job positions in the same company. And I'm also applying for a, uh, uh an additional, uh, contracting position. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've been very busy. So <laughs> Being able to get back on here has been um, a bit of a challenge, but I've been trying to record when I can. And now that it's all finally built, we can come together and we can really unpack what has happened in this video. So yeah, let's talk about the foundation first. We, um, this is, I believe it is 200 blocks in diameter. Um, so you saw the terraform and I had to, I had to flatten this whole area out, draw out my circle, place down these blocks, and then I thought this was just too much gray. It just, I, I thought that it looked, um, it looked like there was obviously construction work here that wasn't fixed. So I thought, you know, let's make it look a little more natural and add some greens to it and add some lighting. So pretty much everywhere where we have stone, uh, for the most part, has some sort of moss and mossy cobblestone, some lamp posts, some azaleas hidden here and there. Um, during this time, I actually had a really great time putting this together because I was watching uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Dragon Ball Super is what I'm on now. So that's uh, that's been fun. It was, uh, it was good to kind of, you know, have that in the background while I just kind of was putting all these blocks together. Um, so now let's 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 talk about this. First of all, I mean, let's just let, let me just 
do that for you real quick. Just even if this doesn't work, I have not tested this yet. Um, <laughs> I have tested each one individually without the mobs on peaceful difficulty. Um, and it all works. It's all wired up to our central AFK spot, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But just just imagine. OK, so uh, let me let me cut to another clip real quick. OK, so you got to picture it. You know, you're just flying over, just trying to get from point A to point B. And you come across this like. Like just just alone, this you I, I'm just I'm just I'm just amazed um, at at what I did here. I am just it took a lot of time and it took a lot of patience. I really tried to slow it down. And that's also why it took longer for this episode to come out, because I wanted to make sure it looked good. I wanted to make sure I have the right colors, the right uh, textures and color palette. And I decided to stick with deep slate and red glass. And it just it just looks great with even the redstone. I was go thinking over this last night. The red redstone from the torches, the dust, even the, the hoppers, it all goes well with the glass and with the purple accents and the blue accents and the little extra lighting that we have there for decoration, I think just looks really, really good. And we have four of them. We have four of these. So anyone that's been following Navy Nexus, um, if you've ever built this in your world, you know just how powerful one of these is. And well, I, just, I wanted to build four because well, why not? Um, it has been fully customized um, for my liking. So there will be not a single ounce of of uh, rotten flesh. We have this little thing to thank for that. Um, so if anyone's been following Silent Whisperer, I took his um, he had for his uh, 24 villager raid farm. <coughs> He used this lovely little thing to kind of help filter out and process the just massive amount of items. So we go in here. Yeah, we got rotten flesh filtering out all of these and then one for piglet heads because this produces a lot of rotten flesh. And then we have this lovely thing right in here. All the stuff on the outside. This is going to filter out um, our non stackables. So with the gold farm, we have the gold swords, which we obviously don't need those, especially with four of these bad boys running all at once. Um, it's going to just throw all of that into lava, the rotten flesh, golden swords, all into lava. This is purely going to harvest gold nuggets and gold ingots. And we can see that this design, I have uh, adapted it a little bit for XP collection. So normally if you build one of these, you'd actually access the farm through here. Um, you'd have like a, uh, what's it called? Scaffolding coming up here. And then you would turn on a switch from the inside to turn on the portals and to turn on the trident killers. Um, I have rigged it up to where I can turn everything on from that central hub. We'll go over there in just a moment. And then what's been placed instead of a place to AFK, we have ourselves the water streams and the packed ice for transporting the XP. It has been optimized to quickly kill the mobs as quick as possible. As soon as they come down into the drop shoot, they're not coming all the way down like in the original design from Navy Nexus. I am trying to have them die as quick as possible. So all their items go straight down. We actually have inside right underneath. There's a two by two of let me let me get right in here. So see where these uh this uh, these tridents are. This is a little flaw we'll talk about later, but we have a two by two and under each of the the blocks of packed ice, we have hopper mine carts immediately taking any item that drops down, sucking it in, dropping it into the filter systems. And then all the XP, of course, is going to follow the water streams. The glitched ones that, uh, you know, are just like the visual XP orbs are also going to go. So that's going to help reduce lag. And then, of course, the XP itself is going to come all the way down into that central hub. Now, let's talk about the design flaw. Now, like I said, I wanted to make sure that all the XP was going to come straight to me. Items get filtered out immediately, right? So in order for the XP to drop out with everything and go into the water stream, we have to use glass panes. And because we're using glass panes, I'm sure some of you already figured this out by now. Um, tridents, when you load in and out of the world, they will actually drop down through that middle point of the glass panes and they'll drop down into our water stream, which is a, a, it's um, it's it's annoying. Um, but the solution is actually it's actually quite easy, barely an inconvenience. Um, what we'll do is where our previous AFK spot would be for the original design. We have these doors. Let me get out my sword. Yes. 
get out the sword. And then we'll go down there into the water stream, grab the trident, and we'll just have to place them back in every single time. It's a little annoying, but it's it works. And then we'll have to do this for every single farm, of course, which, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little annoying. It's 16 different slots, so I think 32 tridents in total. Um, and then also for those that haven't updated their their gold farm, uh, back when Navy Nexus made this, we did not have powdered snow. We were using water buckets to break the portals. Um, instead of using a water bucket, just do a bucket of powdered snow. Uh, reduces lag, it gets, it's not as messy if it's, for some reason the powdered snow is um, dispensed and not going back in. You're not going to have like this long stream of water crashing down from the top of these portals. So that's also something that we took into consideration. So let's talk about the central hub. So we have all of the XP, or X for short, funneling into the center. We have these water streams also in the shape of an X and they're all going into the center of my box. What I'm trying to tell you is, is this is my custom built Xbox. And so then we will just go right in here. All of the portals are connected from the from here. And because I use the same color palette, the redstone actually doesn't look messy. And because it's red glass everywhere, the red, like I said, I think blends in pretty well. So we're gonna come in here. We got a nice little place to sleep. And all the XP is just going to rain down on me right from above. It's perfectly set up. No mobs will spawn in here because we have bottom slabs. The light is purely for look. And then we also have some cute little uh, zombified piglin skulls for decoration and for trophy. And of course, we have every single shulker box loader stocked completely full. It took about two shulkers of, of, of spruce wood. Luckily, because of the farm in a previous episode, I have plenty of wood. And we still have so many shulker shells from the previous shulker farm that I built a long time ago. So in about a half an hour or so, I got all of these completely filled up. And so now I guess it's 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 time to test this out. So what we're going to have to do, actually, because we have the tridents that I have to throw, we're just going to keep this open at all times. And then we're also going to have to probably put mending on these tridents um, so they don't break. I put impaling on them. Um, I still need to get some water up in the pistons, I think. I don't know if there's room, but we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. And then once we have our tridents, we just go down into these little drop shoots. We will uh, kill the livestock. Oh, stop it. Stop it. You're overreacting. Stop it. Stop it. And then we'll get the tridents right here. Very simple setup. And get away, get away, get away. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, okay, was not expecting that. Good thing I had my, uh, good thing I had the totem. We're gonna have to go get another one. Wow, okay. And while we're up here, let's go ahead and take care of our water buckets with the trap door. Perfect. Now with impaling five, they will die even quicker. And let's go ahead and let's turn on this one. And then we'll turn on this one. How's the lag? So far, so good. Let's turn on the third one. Okay, this is where we're getting some drop in frames. Okay, but the XP should be coming in. You know what? Let's go ahead and turn on this one. Let's see if the if we can crash the Xbox. This is a good sign, but we did it, everybody. We made a very, very powerful golden XP farm. We do have a few bugs, but that's okay. Uh, we can't have progress without a few mess ups every now and then. We just got to learn from it, make it better and improve it. Um, now that we're over here, I was talking about having some security. So we'll kind of block this area off. Um, something like that, maybe. Um, no, 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 because then the then the full adults can can sneak out of here. We, we, we definitely don't want that happening. Um, I may have to redo some of the redstone wiring and raise it up a bit more so I can install some walls and then leave an opening right here or something like that for the XP. And then I think iron golems will attack piglins because they are hostile and iron golems are supposed to protect me, their maker. So we could try that in the next episode or so or off camera we'll see what happens there maybe something right here to prevent mobs from falling through but xp i can't think of what though um so it'll, it'll take some big brain power 
But that's going to be it for today's episode, everybody. Thank you all again so much for watching. I am Timeless Traveler, and this was my Let's Play. It's been a long ride. It's been a long time since last, ep last episode, I know, but we finally had this put together. Again, we're going to work out some of the bugs, either off camera or in the next episode, but this is looking amazing, and I'm, uh, even though it's, it's a little buggy, I am very happy with how it turned out. I just recently hit 900 subscribers, so what that means, celebrate. Uh, next person that comments that they want their, their Minecraft character built in my world, first one to reply, we'll have that built. Uh, probably in the next episode or two, we'll see what happens. What I'm thinking, because we have so much space here, is that I'll just build one of one, one of your characters right here, and we'll we'll just add on to here as well as over in the industrial district. We already have two people in the industrial district. Let's get some of you in here at the gold farm as well. We also need to come up with a name for this. Um, so I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. So I was thinking for a special. We could do a tutorial on this if you want. Let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see a tutorial on this. Of course, full credit. Uh, pretty much most of it is going to be credited to Navy Nexus because this is pretty much his design. He spent a lot of time understanding the technical aspects of the game to make this as optimized as possible. Uh, specifically where we have, you know, everything chunk aligned properly. This is all perfectly in four chunks. All the dispensers have to be in a certain area. Um, he spent a lot of time understanding the game and the mechanics to make this farm run perfectly as possible. And then, of course, there's going to be some credits to Silent Whisperer because he's the only person that I've seen in his videos that had this massive auto dropper disposal system. Uh, and then, of course, Navy Nexus for the shulker box loader. I love this thing um, as well as for the uh, disposing of the gold. So, yes, let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial for this uh, as my 1000 subscriber special. Um, it's going to be a big one. Very big tutorial because, I mean, as you can tell, this this, this farm is massive. Um, so just let me know down below if, if you're interested in that. And for my 900th celebration, let me know and I will build you somewhere over here, overlooking the farm. But again, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. You all take care. Have an amazing day and I will see you in the next episode.